So we've almost completed the guide on multimeters. We've done almost every mode now of most juice, with the exception now of diode mode and capacitor mode. We'll cover diode mode. All there really is to capacitor mode is testing a capacitor. So I might just show you that at the end of this video. But let's focus on diode mode. So what diode mode is typically used for is actually more for testing digital circuits and fault finding on traces on circuit boards. Its original use was to test if actual diodes were working. So devices that block voltage in one way up to a very high voltage and allow voltage through the other way at low voltage. Other diodes include LEDs, which are light emitting diodes. So we can test LEDs using the diode mode, but you'll find in a moment that diode mode is mostly used for diagnostics and repair, more so than just testing diodes. So let's just jump in and take a look at diode mode. Specifically, I'm in the middle of repairing two switches at the minute, and I can happily show you a good diagnostics test on these, as well as what happens when you're simply testing resistors and general parts of a Game Boy to give you a feel for how the mode works. So let's just jump in and take a look at these circuits. So as always, we've got to get the multimeter in the right mode first. So you can see on my multimeter, I've changed it to the diode and capacitor symbol here, the top one being a diode, the one below being a capacitor. And then on this particular meter, it's a bit tricky to get into. Uh, I believe it's not set up, it is menu, and then select up and down. So select diode or cap, and then select whether you want diode or cap here. So it's already set up for that, and we're in diode mode. And the quick test for diode mode, it's very similar to continuity. So you'll find that you touch together the leads and you'll get a beep, just like continuity. And you can also find shorts in essence, um, just like continuity mode. So if we take the shield here and the shield here, you can see we've got continuity between them. So it acts very similar in that sense. But let's first start with how you're meant to use diode mode or what typically diode mode's designed for. So if we just get this Game Boy here and we've got some LEDs at this top corner, the power and the low power LED. You can see we've actually got the symbol here as well on the LED. So you can see the little line here indicating that this side of the diodes is the negative and here is the positive. So if we were to connect the negative to one side of the LED and the positive to the other, you'll see one of the LED lights up. So you get a red LED and here it should be the green LED. And you can see they both light up. But interestingly, as well as visually seeing this diode working, this LED, if you look at the meter, it says it's got a 1.77 volt on the diode. So this means this red LED, if you, once we go over how LEDs work, it'll make sense. But this red LED has a 1.77 volt drop. If we look at green, it's a higher voltage normally, and it's 1.85. And that changes with current draw as well. But generally, you test diodes by applying the probe leads to either side of a diode. This should go on the negative side of the diode. This should go on the positive. If the diode's working, then the correct way around, so we can use these test points here, you should see a volts drop. And if we flip the probes around, you should see the other way is open line, which means there's no connection. It's the same as not having a connection. That's a good diode. If a diode was faulty, say this LED was not even on here or blown, effectively open, so an open diode, both ways naturally will measure open circuits because if there was nothing there or if it's broken physically and there's no electrical connection, doesn't matter which way around you put your lead, you'll get open line. So that test indicates the LED or the diode is open as we call it because you can have a, a failed diode can either be permanently open where it's burnt and left a gap or it could fuse together and break over and then you have a short circuited diode. If you have a short circuited diode, you'd get testing both ways the same volts drop. So you'll either get a dead short that beeps both ways, meaning it's completely shorted, or maybe it's partly bridging, but there's resistance there. But the key there would be both ways would measure the same voltage. Now there's exceptions where this is meant to happen, where things happen like Zener diodes, where they break down both ways. But in general, testing diodes is open line one way, voltage another is a good diode. That's general rule of thumb. There's rarely, rarely a case when I need to check a diode, um, and it's rarely a case they ever fail. So now let's move on to the much more common situation where we want to test, say, a circuit board. So I've got two Nintendo switches here, and what we do here 
and I'll explain why this is the case as well. When you want to use diode mode to test a circuit, the way you do it, so we just take say this one for now, the way you'll see everybody doing it is they'll put the red lead on a ground point and then they'll probe around the circuit board with the black lead and they'll be looking for normally going over capacitors like this. And this is a faulty one potentially here. That's why I'm midway between repairing this. Let's say we went over here where the charger is fine. You'd normally see that one side beeps briefly and another side beeps to ground, which means the left side of this capacitor is shorted to ground and the other side isn't. So when you're testing it in diode mode, you'll normally see people going around a board like this, beep solid at one side of the capacitor and beep briefly the other side. And you go around the board kind of expecting this behavior where you either get, for example, here and here, it follows true. So you're just getting a beep one side and a permanent beep the other. But let's explain what's actually going on here. So in diode mode, what the meter does is it tries to push usually around one or two milliamps into the circuit. So if you have a short from here to here, it's just the same board, a milliamp is going to throw, flow through that connector no problem. And once all the current's gone, the meter beeps because it's effectively considered a short. It's, it's been able to push the milliamp through the circuit and needs more current. When it gets a diode, it pushes the voltage until the diode breaks down and draws one milliamp and then measures a voltage. So to just explain how that milliamp draw happens, let's just get, say, a 3.3K resistor. Now what happens if we put the meter through this resistor? So if I put the meter on one side and the meter on the other, you can see I get a voltage of 2.73. If you divide 2.73 by the 3,300 ohm resistor here, you'll find out that you get roughly 0 0.001, which is one milliamp. So what the meter is doing is pushing a milliamp through the circuit and then using VIR to calculate the voltage. So this number, when you're not measuring diodes and you're just measuring circuits, is really telling you what the whole circuit from point A to point B is doing. So if you have a resistor and another resistor and maybe a capacitor, the number that gets generated when you touch over a circuit is useful for diagnosing things. So in general, and this is where you must have a working board for these kind of tests to work, if we were to touch over here and say go to the top left capacitor on the chip up here, see how we've got 0.357 volts. So that's a value that's, you don't need to know what that value is. It's not important what the value is. It's important when you're doing a comparative check is does this value match another board? So you can see here, both of these boards have a very, very close voltage to that pin. So if I was to put this here, and you can see I'm testing from here to this bottom cap, you get a very similar result between boards. So without knowing anything about the specifics of the board, we can be likely assured that whatever's happening at this point on the circuit in general, and it's not guaranteed, but it normally holds true, it means that everything connected to this point of the circuit is likely operating the same as the other board. So if we have one working board and one faulty board, for example down here, this voltage regulator that partly provides the CPU with voltage is suspected faulty. So if we take a working board and we measure, say from here to, now even though these boards are slightly different as well, uh, there's two regulators on this as opposed to one. I've worked on enough of these to know that the general values here will be the same. So these are the inductors, these are slightly light brown color components. If I touch on one side of say the left hand one, you get 0.19. Go on the other one, 0.19. The other one, 0.19. So all these inductors are about 0.19. Now if I check this board that I suspect faulty over here, and these are the inductors this time, and I touch on the legs, you can see I get 0.09. So half the value, and that's 0.00. And then the other ones, and 0.02 on the others. So you can see this part of the circuit that's doing the same job is acting different than a working board. So what you can judge from that is typically there's something to look at on this board in this area. Something about this circuit is likely not operating the same. Now, as you'll find, this is never an absolute guarantee. And specifically when you're working with two slightly different boards as well, that's not normally how you'd do it. You'd wanna work on an identical working board 
and a non-working board. But the way you use it is to simply find differences in the board. So you put your red probe on ground and you just tap around the circuit and what you can do is write all these numbers down as you're going around the circuit and make yourself a sort of spreadsheet of these specific values and expected values in diode mode. And that works for so many circuits because it not only measures resistance, it calculates transistors inside of chips, it accounts for capacitors, it all ends up balancing out to the overall resistance between ground and the point you're testing. So it's a really useful diagnostic method and the main thing you'll be using to diagnose when you're using your multimeter, especially on more modern hardware where you have no schematics and things are more than likely blown components versus damaged traces. So the only other question you might have in terms of why are we putting the red lead on ground, for example? Well, if we swap the leads around, bring in the meter, and let's say we put uh, the black probe on the ground and then touch on the meter. You can see we get 2.3 volts. Go the other way and put it on this way and you get 0.35. So the reason you swap these leads around is if anything in the circuit from ground to source is acting similar to a diode or typically breaking down under voltage, when you put it this way around with the ground on ground as expected and the current source coming from the higher end, that's how the circuits generally work. So you're going to find that if you have a diode in circuit, for example, you're going to get a diode reading and you're also going to light up the diode. So by flipping the polarity around, and working in what is typically on most systems, the opposite way in which current would be expected to flow, you get more consistent readings. So you can use it both ways, but as you'll see, the convention is typically to put the red probe on ground to prevent things like diodes in circuit, giving you different readings. This way you get a more consistent reading. So say we wanted to test this board and we suspected this chip over here was faulty. You'd simply set the meter into diode mode, put your red probe on ground, and you test over usually capacitors. You can test over resistors as well. You generally test over all the points. So you test over this cap, and you get 0.37. And what you're looking for when you're looking for just shorts in the first place, quick tests, is capacitors don't normally beep out to ground both sides. It's normally one. If they do beep out to ground both sides, if you get a working board that you know works, you can compare whether on the working board that's also the case. And it's more about checking the difference between two boards. If you don't have a working board, the only thing you can really test in diode mode is if there's a short over capacitors and you're taking an assumption that you wouldn't normally have a short over two, uh, both pins of the capacitor, which holds true in most cases. So for example, that side is fine and not shorted, that side is shorted, that side shorted, that side isn't. So based on these quick tests, that only one side of each capacitor is going to ground you'd expect this circuit to work. Same with inductor, one side and other side is both beeping, which is good. It's only normally a concern if both sides beep to ground. It's not rarely a concern if both sides don't beep permanently. So with this being a working board, if you suspected, say, this chip over here, same principles again, put your probe on the ground and go over all the inductors on both pins and both of them beep fine. And then you can see this one here. See how it's actually beeping both sides? Now, because I know this is a working board, this is where you'd expect this inductor to beep out both sides. And the same for all of these. Now, the reason for this, as I happen to know, this is a 1.1 volt regulator. So when the voltage in the system is low, you will normally get breakdown anyway, and it making a beep. So CPU areas, anything to do with CPUs, really low voltages, you'd expect certain areas to beep out. If we take this board that I'm in the middle of repairing, uh, I think I've finished, I'm 99% sure I've finished repairing this regulator. So let's see if this holds true so far based on our tests. And remember, none of these beeped out both sides. And you can see a difference in behavior there. So unless I forgot to test the bottom of this cap, this cap beeps differently. So this is where we go, okay, let's grab the working board and go, oh no, it's fine on this board. 
So when you have a working board, you can nice and easily and fairly confidently compare two boards and find faults that way. When you're working without a working board, only rely on this mode really as a kind of short circuit test. So just going around checking resistors and caps for specifically capacitors for shorting both sides is the most common fault finding of this technique. But the best way to diagnose a problem with a board is to simply have another working one so you can do the measurement difference. So you can watch the voltage difference in measurements and it gives you some good assumptions as to where to look for potential faults. There's many more techniques to find faults, but in a multimeter situation, this is probably one of the most useful modes for anything meaningful, short of simply testing for voltages, shorts, and resistance. The diode mode, if used correctly, can be very useful and very powerful for a multimeter. So you'll see me use the multimeter, probably not that often. You'll see me use different techniques that I usually find problems with. I will normally take a board and find out the data sheet of this chip or make an assumption of what this chip should do. Uh, with me designing hardware as well, I kind of know what to expect and based on looking at things, I know what they should do. And I'll use more of a, a voltage meter or an oscilloscope kind of test or a thermal camera. I'll use other techniques. I rarely use a multimeter to diagnose because I have more powerful tools and knowledge. But that doesn't mean the multimeter isn't useful. It's simply the starting point on your diagnostic journey. So now we've kind of seen the multimeter for what it's doing. We can move on to probably the next useful device, which is a bench power supply. So we can monitor dead shorts, currents, we can power devices without a cable and see what's happening there and do similar diagnostics. But hopefully you've found this bit of information useful. You will see us using this, so you will learn more. But this is how you use diode mode in general and how you use your multimeter to start diagnosing and finding faults in a circuit.